Hello everyone. Good morning. I am Vinay, currently pursuing my doctorate program in Electrical and Computer Engineering from Santa Clara University, California, USA. My focus is on device physics and uh, processes. Today I am here to talk about influence of crystallographic orientations on the growth of the monoxide of silicon. So let's move on to the next slide. So I'll start with a few basic concepts and show you how these concepts align with our data gathered from scanning electron microscopy, ellipsometry, and atomic force microscopy. So let's start. So why care about thermal oxides is a good start. So where do we see these? So most predominantly we use it in gate and field oxides for field effect transistors. So it's a heart of the device where a conducting channel is formed between source and train. And the field oxide provides isolation from other devices. And the thermal oxide does provide a highest quality because of lowest interface trap densities. And in today's technology, it's a very thin film. It's around 1.2 nanometers. So it is important to understand how to grow thermal oxides. And let's talk about what are the factors that are being affecting the thermal oxide growth and quality. So the first type is the type of oxidation process. So we have dry, wet, CVD types of oxidations. So dry involves a pure oxygen, wet involves uh, a steam. Uh, boiling the steam and then getting the oxygen out of it. And the next thing is uh, how long the oxidation is carried out, which is nothing but the time, and at what pressure of the oxygen is being introduced, that's the pressure, and then at what temperature. And the next thing is the orientation of silicon wafers. So based on the packaging density, surface energy, surface roughness, so the orientation of silicon wafers does affect the thermal oxide growth and quality and dope and concentration of silicon wafers too. So how the diffusion of oxygen into the silicon is affected by dopants. These are broadly classified as the factors affecting the thermal oxide growth and quality. Let's start with uh, surface energy and 2D package density. Surface is where crystal structure terminates and the bonds of these surface atoms that are not satisfied gives rise to a surface energy. So those surface energy depends on the packing density. Usually higher the packing density, greater is the number of nearest neighboring atoms, results in the more atomic bonds in a plane. Consequently, lower is the surface energy. Lower the surface energy is nothing but lesser is the energy to break or form bonds. Now let's see how we can relate this theory to a silicon planes. I did consider 100 and 111 silicon planes. So the picture on the right shows the atoms distribution with respect to 100 plane and 111 plane. It's a fact that planar density for 111 plane is larger than 100 plane. And the discussion from previous slides suggests that the larger the planar density, the lesser the surface energy. That is, 111 plane has smaller surface energy than 100 plane. Therefore, the 111 plane can form bonds easier than 100 plane. Resulting 111 plane has more atomic interactions at surface than 100 plane. Now let's see the mechanisms of oxide growth and related to the silicon planes. So let's talk about the deal grow model. So Deal and Groove presented a successful mathematical model on thermal oxidation of silicon. Their mathematical model conveys that growth takes place with two key mathematical behaviors, which are linear and parabolic. The picture on the right provides a general relationship for thermal oxidation of silicon. The x-axis where you see T plus tau, it's a total time taken for growth. And A square over 4B, it's a time. So it's a time over time ratio on the x-axis 
and on the y-axis you have x0 over a over 2 is the rate of oxide th thickness growth. The growth starts initially as a linear rate and, and then after a certain time the diffusion factor dominates so that the rate of the growth slows down and follows parabolic rate. So initially the growth of the thermal oxide starts with a linear rate and then slowly transitions to a parabolic rate. So in between these two states there is a transition which is modeled as both linear parabolic rate. Therefore the study suggests that the parabolic rate constant B is dependent on pressure and temperature from the uh, deal row model and this says that oxide growth is dependent on wide range of variations of conditions such as ambient pressure, temperature and time. As per our discussion in last slide, the 111 plane has more atomic interactions at surface than 100 plane. So considering equal growth conditions of oxide for both 111 plane and 100 plane should su suggest a result that 111 plane oxide thickness is larger than 100 plane oxide thickness due to high linear growth rate for 111 plane because of more atomic interactions at surface compared to 100 plane. Let's look at the experiment. Coming to the experiment, we did the dry thermal oxidation experiment on 111 plane and 100 plane N-type doped silicon wafers. These silicon wafers were cleaned using standard RCA method. The picture before oxidation on right side shows 111 plane and 100 plane cleaned specimens stacked on a glass board. Then two inch long specimens were oxidized in a tube furnace that can operate at a maximum temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius. The furnace picture is shown on the right side. Oxidation process was carried out at 1000 degrees Celsius with a purity of 99.999% oxygen at a pressure of 50 psi for a duration of 2 hours. Ramping up of temperature to 1000 degrees Celsius carried out in 4 steps and followed by 2 hours of oxidation at 1000 degrees Celsius. Then a single ramp down ca concluded the experiment. The specimens after oxidation were turned out into royal blue color as shown in the picture in after oxidation. Let's look at the analysis of oxide samples in scanning electron microscopy. The pictures were gathered using Hitachi's scanning electron microscopy. This represents the cross section of silicon and silicon dioxide interface. The red arrow shows the oxide thickness film both planes show relatively similar oxide thickness, but the measure of scale is slightly different for, dif for both planes. The oxide thickness found to be 890 angstroms for 100 plane and 1000 angstroms for 111 plane. Now we'll look into the oxide surface data on atomic force microscopy. The pictures were gathered using Bruker's atomic force microscopy. The 2D and 3D images of 111 plane and 100 plane shows hills and valleys on the surface of oxide film. These are 1 micrometer by 1 micrometer surface scans performed using tapping mode. The results of the surface roughness will be shown in future slides. Now let's look at the ellipsometer data from oxide thickness. This data gathered using Gardner's ellipsometry L1166S as shown on the right side of the slide. For each sample, we did recorded the data at four locations and at each location, we captured 15 consistent readings of oxide thickness. So in total, we have 60 data points on 111 plane and 100 plane oxide film. For 111 plane, the thickness found to be varying from 1155.33 angstroms to 1204.82 angstroms. For 100 plane, thickness is varying from 1075.87 angstroms 
to 1097.55 angstroms. This data suggests that the growth is not uniform at angstrom scale. Moving on to next slide. Now let's compare the results from scanning electron microscopy, ellipsometry, and atomic force microscopy. Oxide thickness from scanning electron microscopy and ellipsometry suggests that a difference of 100 angstroms is noticed with 111 plane and 100 plane. About the ellipsometry, the results that you are seeing, it's the average value of the four locations for each plane. From atomic force microscopy, Due to slightly higher packing density of 111 plane compared to 100 plane, the surface roughness tend to show similar result that 111 plane has slightly higher roughness than 100 plane. The RMS is the root mean square value of the roughness and the RA is the average value of the roughness of the surface. About the discussion, Ellipsometry and scanning electron microscopy results suggest that 111 plane and 100 planes have an oxide thickness difference of 100 angstroms. Data gathered from atomic force microscopy suggests that 111 plane has slightly greater roughness than 100 and is in agreement with the literature as in reference 6. The oxide thickness closely follows the oxidation color chart data the results are pretty consistent with deal room model. Conclusion Growth rate is different for different crystallographic planes. Ellipsometry and scanning electron microscopy provide consistent oxide thickness variations on 111 plane and 100 plane. Atomic force microscopy reveals that the standard deviation of surface roughness as follows as point 125 angstroms for 111 plane and 0 0.045 angstroms for 100 plane. Future work Comparing oxide roughness of 100 plane and 111 plane from 1000 angstroms to 10 angstroms, that is, from the surface of silicon dioxide to silicon to silicon dioxide interface. This is a perpendicular direction looking from silicon dioxide surface into the silicon. Exploring dependency of directed constant of silicon dioxide films on crystallographic orientations. The silicon dioxide films grown using AFM for nanoelectronic devices and then compare it to the thermal oxides and analyze silicon dioxide films quality grown using AFM. Here are the references that we used. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach me at vandra at seu.edu. The end. Good luck guys and once again good morning.